Octanana Reeve Du, the author of what I call my African Immortal series, which began with My Soul to Keep in 1997. In 2001, I followed up with The Living Blood, that I was so thrilled won actually an American Book Award, which I never expected. And then now, in 2008, finally, after a long wait, the African Immortals are back in Blood Colony, which takes place in the near future. It's my first near future novel. It takes place in the year 2015, when gasoline is $6 a gallon, although I may really have not gotten the price high enough. <laughs> so maybe I should have gotten for $8 a gallon, the way these prices are going up. But this story, the reason I, I wanted to set this story in the near future was because I wanted to follow the journey of these African Immortals that began in my soldier keep. We have an Ethiopian named Dawit who is living with a, an American newspaper reporter and she has no idea he's 500 years old. That's where it all began. How well do you really know the person you're married to? That was that question in that book. And The Living Blood was uh, about a powerful child, a three and a half year old toddler who has the capacity to change the weather. So she's very strong. And then how might that power be used in a three year old's hands? I think it'd be kind of scary. And so Blood Colony picks up that saga of the African Immortals. Their blood can heal anything. It's just one drop of their blood and your system would wipe out cancer, AIDS, you name it. So they walk around with a lot of value in their bodies. And uh, it's dangerous to have that much power in your blood. Uh, Fauna, the protagonist of Blood Colony, has power even beyond her healing power. She has power of the mind. She's a very refined telepath. Hear what you're thinking, plant thoughts in your head. Uh, hear what you're thinking from a distance, feel your spirit from a distance. So Fauna is the next level of a mortal. And Blood Colony is about what happens when Fauna, who's 17 now, decides she doesn't want to hide in the woods away from everybody protecting the blood. She's not satisfied with the way Dawid and Jessica are making the blood available to only a few countries in a very cautious manner. So she has the blood out running on the streets at an underground railroad. They call it Glow. And this book is about what happens when that blood comes into the knowledge of at least some parts of the world. In some corners, in some quarters, people are beginning to understand that there is healing blood out there running around. So that's what Blood Colony is about and what happens when you attract that. I have a website. I'm trying to be more web savvy. My website is www.tananareevedu.com. If you want to read my blog, which I'm better about blogging now, is that, but it's tananareevedu.blogspot.com. And there you can click to my Google Tananareevedu Readers Group, where I have members signing up. They're actually starting a little book club to discuss my soul to keep the living blood so they can get ready for Blood Colony, which is out now. It's actually shipping. It should be in the stores if it's not there. Well, you have. I we published a novel uh, called Casa Negra. It's my first collaboration with my husband, Stephen Barnes, and the actor Blair Underwood. We all put our minds together and came up with a mystery novel about an actor, former male escort, former male escort, now actor, who gets caught up in the first murder of a female rapper. And he has to solve that crime or go to jail for it and discover he has a knack for crime solving. So that's the Tennis and Hardwick series for Casa Negra. The second in the series in the Night of the Heat will be out in September. And it's going to change the world and we love it and we love you. And somehow it never happens that way. It never quite happens that way. And what we would talk about is the fact that, you know,